Hi, George here. I'll be showing you the truth of removing backgrounds here in Premiere Elements 2025. Now, the first thing we need to understand is different kinds of backgrounds and what you can do and how you can remove those backgrounds. I have two examples right here in this one video clip. There's a green background on either side. And then we have the background that's in behind the actual subject. If I can forward a little bit, you see how this girl kind of dances around like that little animated dancing person. If we wanted to remove the green screen here, that's very easy in Premiere Elements. There actually is a tool for doing that. Another example of that is this ball over here. I'll just bring this one in. Same thing, just taking out this green background. It could also be blue. That's another common background color. Let's take a look at this one first. Over here, right-hand side where it says Effects. And let's change this to Video Effects. And the one you want in here is Keying. This is the Keying section. We have three options in here. Here's a green screen option right there. Here's a blue screen option up here and a chroma key. These all basically do the same thing. If you're doing green screen, just click on the green screen one, drag it onto your video clip like that, and it takes out that green screen. Now, if I play this, there's no longer anything in that background. Now, to prove that we have actual transparency, I'll just grab this cloud image over here. Let's bring this in here, and I'll put the video on top. And there we go. There is that cloud in the background. Notice that you can see through the ball a little bit here. You can adjust that. That's coming over here in the threshold and cutoff sections. I try working with both of these. Cutoff, as you can see here, I can get right to here, 30% it looks like, and we get a pretty solid ball, and we still see our background. So pretty easy to remove a solid colored background. Obviously, my clouds don't really fit in here. They're not quite wide enough, so I'll click on that cloud clip. Let's go up in here to scale. And I can then drag the sides out and make this a bit larger. Just scale up like that or use the scale control right here. Okay, that now fits properly. Now, if we go back over here to this clip, we can do the exact same thing for these two areas in here. Just use that green screen and remove that and get that clear. It's not difficult to do. I'll just drag this up to the next video line like that. Let's just extend our sky out in behind and pull it over here a little bit. There we go. Same thing. We just go back over here to the FX, video effects and keying and green screen and then drop it onto the video clip that's the top one right there and that then takes out that green again same problem here we're kind of seeing through a little bit just come down here to the cutoff and try adjusting the cutoff just a little bit you can just click over here and just drag over that and try to get that bit better looks like right about here right about 29 percent is good on that one again pretty easy to do that kind of a background removal taking out solid color areas now another way to do that is if we had an area that was a natural color, and I have one right down here, I'll bring this fish video down. We have the nice blue in the background. Now this is taken in an aquarium, and there is a blue background on the aquarium. You can try to get rid of this kind of stuff, but you can have some problems where you have the edges kind of blurring into that background. They can cause some issues. So in this, I could either try doing this with the blue screen removal or with chroma key. Let's take a look at that. Back over here to effects. Let's go back up here to video effects and keying. Again, blue screen X, just like the green screen did. If we go to chroma key, I'll drag this one onto that video track. Take our color sampler right here. Grab the eyedropper tool and then drop into that blue area. So we're now choosing that blue as the color that we want to key off of. And it removes a lot of that as you can see in here. Now it's leaving a lot still. So I have to come in here and right down here where it says similarity. Just drag this slider up and you can begin to pull that out. Now notice I'm getting a halo in here around that. And if I go too high up here, I begin to lose the tail. And that's because those colors are similar to that blue. So we can kind of do an okay job in here, but not a great job. Let's look at our blend. Sometimes by coming in here and just playing with these things, kind of tweaking them, you can get a better result. I'm going to try threshold a little bit. So I'm just trying things out and seeing what we get. Threshold is not giving me anything that's useful. And back to our similarity. So I can get a pretty good job back in here. And if I was replacing this with a more interesting blue image, that halo probably would drop away. So if I had underwater scene with some blue in the background, other fish and so forth, I could probably get away with that on this one. So you can come in here and do this kind of chroma keying effect pretty easily if you have large solid color areas. That's the kind of thing that you can do well here inside of Premiere Elements. Now the difficult thing is on something like this. I can't do a green screen here. There's no green. I can't do a blue screen. I would just lose her shorts. I can't come in here and color key because a lot of the colors in here are the same as the colors in the shirt. So that's not going to work. 
I've tried a bunch of different inexpensive online tools for doing this, and I haven't found anything that does a good job with video. The best I found was with Filmora, and that does a reasonably good job, but you'll have to clean that up. The cleanup was with using just a paintbrush and eraser tools, and it can be real time consuming and picky. So I haven't found a good automated way to do this, but there is a way to get a nice clean mask and remove this background, and you can do that with the tools that I believe you already have. Almost everybody who has Premiere Elements also has Photoshop Elements, and we can do this in Photoshop Elements, but it has to be done on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. You can't do it as an automated process over a bunch of frames. It's going to have to be frame-by-frame, -frame, and that can take you a long time. Now, this video in here, this clip in here, is about a minute and a half long. So if the whole video was something which I wanted, then that's going to be a lot of frames. 30 frames per second at a minute and a half. That's just a whole lot of frames in here. So I would first want to come in here, find the spot I wanted to use, maybe this little running section right in here, that little bit right there. Keep that little bit and only edit or work on that bit. So I may want to come in and just be a bit pickier on how much of this video I want to use. Let's just say that I had a long video, this again, minute and a half, that I wanted to use the whole video for. We'll have to first export this as a frame by frame. So here's one frame, here's a frame, Here's a frame. So each one has to be its own separate background removal. Let me show you how that's done. I'm not going to do the whole thing. It would take me a couple of days to do this. So I'll just talk you through it so you'll see the process. Just bring this back a little bit like that. And I'll get rid of this fish section in here. We don't need that. Take out the countdown video right there. And I'll squeeze down my frame. So this is just the video section. Let's take a look at our actual frame count in here. One minute, 40 seconds, and 14 frames. So that's a lot of video. Now, the way you do this is you go up here to the export and share in here where you have format. You have all of your video formats up here. This is where you would normally be exporting something as a video format. But you also can export this in different still image formats, such as a bitmap or a GIF or a JPEG right down here. The one I chose was a PNG format right there. It's a good format to use. And I have it going into my video saves folder right there that I set up on my computer. If I export this, it's going to be exporting every single one of the frames in this project. Right down here, you can see where it says source, 30 frames per second. Right down here, 1 minute, 40 seconds, and 15 frames. So click on export. It's then going to export those frames. Now, when I did this on my sample, this took about five and a half minutes for that export for the 1 minutes, 40 seconds. I'll just close this, and then we'll go over to Photoshop Elements, and I'll show you how to remove the backgrounds over there. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop Elements. I'll go up to File and Open. And here is my Video Save section. This is all of the frames from that video clip. And if I scroll down, way down to the bottom down here, and here's our last frame. So we have 3,014 frames. The one, the Rubux one, that was just what I named the file. And then after that are the frames. So this is 3,014 individual images, which cover all the frames. Some of them we don't need, like this stuff in here. This is all garbage at the end of the video. I don't need any of that stuff. I can just delete that. So my working animations in here would be 2,949 frames. Of course, I could come in and just clip out just a few of these and work with just a few and not the whole animation. If I edited down my video clip inside of Premiere Elements to the part that I wanted to use and then export those frames, but in any case, you're going to be getting a lot of frames. Let's see how this is done. I'll just take this one right here. And you'll have to do this for every single frame that you want to use. Choose open and do this one frame at a time. Here we go. Now using the tools here inside of Photoshop Elements, it's easy to remove that background. Go up here to select, come down to subject, and let Photoshop Elements do all the work for you. And there we go. Now at this point, we need to clean up this selection. This is pretty good, but it's missing a few things. Back in here, that's the backpack. Here's our backpack over here. We need to get those in. We have some spaces in the hair we want to get rid of. So this will need some cleanup. I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit, bring my brush size down a bit, and I'll go over here to the Quick Selection tool. And let's first start off with Add, and then up in here, and I'll click and drag in here. This is going to add that section in. Where you see those little marching ants, so make sure you get rid of those. Add this bit in. Let's add in the rest of that little water bottle. Okay, that's all added in. That's good. We now need to remove some stuff. This little bit over here inside the hands. So switch over here to Remove or Subtract. I'm going to bring my brush size down about half this. I'll just set this at five pixels. And let's just subtract that. And right in here. So I'm using the quick selection. So I don't need to be real careful in the edges. I'll let Photoshop Elements 
find those edges for me. Let's go up here. I want to subtract some stuff up here. This little bit right there. This little bit over in here. A little bit right here. Now we may have to lose some things. This little thin lines right here, thin hairs. Those are too small for me to catch. Hold the space bar down. Let's move our selection here. That's just right in here and get that little bit right here and bit right in there. Okay, I think that's everything. Right up here, a little bit of the head right here. Let's just switch over here to add and I'll make sure I get that caught in. There we go. And that looks good. Control zero to fit screen again. So here's our selection. We can now make a layer mask out of this. Click on the layer mask tool. Here's our layer mask and that removes that whole background. And it's a real nice clean background removal. The problem of course is that this is just one frame out of those 3000 frames that wanted that whole sequence. So this may take you a long time to do it this way, but you're gonna be getting a perfect clean background removal. Now we need to save this out. I'll save it out twice. Go up here to file and save. Now, because this has a layer mask on it, it will automatically save in the Photoshop file format, the PSD file format. Choose save. So if I need to, I can come back on this and I can play around with that mask, try to clean that up if that becomes important. If I miss something possibly, if you're doing 3000 frames, you're bound to miss something at some point. So always save it as a PSD file. We now need to export this out. We'll export back as a PNG file. Go up to file, come down to save as. Then we'll change this down to PNG. There's all our PNGs. Now if I wanna have this as a separate sequence, not a bad idea. I'll just put a letter in front of this. I'll put a G just for myself, a G dash like that and save and okay. Because we put the G dash in the front of the name, the name still has the whole numbered sequence on that. So that allows us then to import all of these images back over into Premiere Elements and then put them onto the timeline as individual frames, but they'll still keep their sequence. And we're back over here in Premiere Elements. Let's now import those, click on the plus sign right here, files and folders, and then back here inside of my video saves folder I set up. And I'll take these two files right here. And again, they're in numerical sequence, choose open. It imports those two files right down here. Click on one, hold the shift key down, click on the second one. And we can select several files this way and then drag the batch onto our timeline. You can see in here, I missed a couple of spots as I go back and forth. A little bit messed up right here. And if I go over here, a little bit messed up right up here. That's why I wanted to save that PSD file, that Photoshop file. So I can go back to this again and clean up those two sections so they match. I know I need to fix those. I can go back and I can fix those and then re-export those out. Same thing right up here, a little bit of problem right there. I can go back and I can clean that up and make sure that these match. So again, this is a time consuming process. This is one reason why a lot of special effects things in films are very expensive to make because you have artists doing one frame at a time and doing things like this where they're cleaning things up. Now the last problem we have is that these are coming in at a much longer length when you bring those in as still images. These are coming in at five seconds long. So we need to have these at just one frame long and not five seconds. So let's zoom in on that. And let's just assume that I had gone through and cleaned everything up. And we'll pull this down and just continue to zoom in on that. There we go. And it looks like one frame is right there. So there's one frame. I can then come over here, grab our second one, pull it up close. So it snaps on. Now be very careful about this when you're inside of Premiere Elements. If I pull too far, it's going to automatically clip everything else out. You don't want to have that. So I'll do Control Z to back out of that. Be very careful. Come in close, but don't go right up against that. You may want to move your playhead back a little bit. And let's just bring this way down. I can now zoom in on this and continue working in. And right there, it kind of snaps to the second frame. That's one frame. Bring that down and then take this clip, pull it down here, let that snap on. So I now have two frames of my new animation right here. Fast forward and fast back. There's our two frames. Again, needs cleanup still, but we have our frames in here. If I take these two frames like this, I'll just pull this up one layer and I can then bring in the background. There we go, a real clean background removal. Now, as you saw, this took a lot of work to get to this point and it's still not quite clean enough yet on those. A couple of things need fixing, but I can fix those. It would then be a perfect background removal. Now this works great if you wanna be using the animation in your own video, just do it like this and you're all set. Now let's say you wanted to use the animation in a different video. Now if it's your own video, it's easy to do. All you have to do is just copy the frames that you've set up in here, your transparent frames. Let's just hide that background. So you copy just those frames, you do that with control C, and you can then paste those into a different video clip or a different project. 
me show you that real fast. Let's make a new blank project here. File, yes, do new project. Leave us at the defaults, choose OK, and then Control V for paste. We can just paste those frames right into this new project. So copy and paste between projects inside of Premiere Elements is real easy to do. Let's say on the other hand that you want to do something else with this. Maybe you want to be able to sell the video clip to somebody else. In that case, you can export this out as its own video without any of your background in there, but you want to export it out in a way that's easy for them to use to remove the background. Now inside of Premiere Elements, you cannot come in and export a transparent background. As you can see here, it automatically gives you a black background. So you want to change this background to something else. I could do it here or I could do it in the other project. It doesn't make any difference. Same exact technique. What you want to do is go over here, click on the project assets right there. There's our two frames that we made. Then come down here, click on the new item button. In here, click on color mat, and then set this to a nice bright green. Just in here someplace, come down, choose your bottom right corner. And if you see this little pop-up window right here, just click on that. It makes a slight adjustment to your color, and this then is easy to use for anybody else. You just want a nice bright green behind that. Choose OK. Give it a name if you want to. It then gives you a solid background color. So I can just scroll back over here. Comes in also on the same video track as you can see here. So the easy way to handle this is to right click on this and let's add a track. And I want to put the track below the first track, before first track. Choose OK. That moves everything here to the second track. We can then grab that green, pull it down and reposition it. And we now have green screen behind our animation. Of course, we only have just those two frames in here. But if I had done more frames, we would then have our animation on top of this green screen. And then simply export this out as a regular video clip. That's export and share. The standard format is H.264. And on the source in here, I personally just set this to a high quality 1080p. This happens to be what this was recorded in originally. Do that. And then it's all set to easily sell to somebody else or just put up on one of the sharing sets if you want to and share it out for free. And then just choose export or then export that video clip out. So real easy, as you can see here, to not only remove the background for your own use, but also you can replace the background with a green screen and then either share or sell this video clip for others to use on their own projects. If you want to learn more about how to use Premiere Elements, I have a whole training course for this. It shows you how to do everything, how to use the timeline, how to use your main view window in here, how to use the quick guided and advanced modes across the top up here. It is all of your panels, all of your tools, everything, everything on the menus. The whole program is explained to you in easy to understand terms. The link for that is going to be at the top of the description. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and give me a like. Also, make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more great Premiere Elements videos coming up, and I'll see you next time.